Okay, so let's have a look at the tropical rainforests, a very big one, very important part of the course. So we're going to go through and look at various aspects of the tropical rainforests. So first of all, let's consider our key terms. Now of these, the real important ones, of course, we've looked at biotic and we've looked at abiotic before. Um, other key ones we're going to be looking at today is to do with the biomass, the weight of living and recently living organisms. We're going to be particularly looking at the nutrient cycle, so the exchange of organic and inorganic material, and we're really going to be considering biodiversity, the number of species that are found in an area. So let's just do a quick bit of exam practice. So we're looking at figure one. State one example of an ecosystem that is found in upland areas. So of course, this is referring back to the work we did on the changing UK landscapes. So we know the upland areas are found particularly up here in Scotland. So we can look on here and we've got a huge area of heath and moorland. So heath or moorland and bogs would be an appropriate answer there. Which of these statements is not correct? So again, you can start to run these down. Wetlands are found around rivers and lakes. Well, that makes sense. Uh, woodlands cover most of the UK. So if we look on here, there aren't particularly woodlands scattered everywhere. They're not found in every location. So we can say that that one is not correct. Two characteristics of heathland. Well, you could talk about how some of them have sandy soils, whilst others are marshy. You could talk about some of the animals that are found there, like the ladybird spider and the sand lizards from the previous work that you will have looked at. Let's move on to the next one. Identify the type of ecosystem found at. So let's have a look there. We can see, so we're doing our six figure grid references, a quick little recap. 190. So 190, we're going to find here along that line. 845, there's 84. We go, imagine about five up, splitting this square into 10 little pieces. So that's going to get us to about there. So we can see where these two meet is about that point. Now, in the exam, you would have a key, and we can see by looking at this, this key, this is a woodland area. So this is a woodland ecosystem. One mark. Give the direction. Now, when you're giving direction, you're not giving you directions like second left on the right and all of that sort of thing. You've just got to say what direction it is from that place to that place. So we're coming down in that direction. So we'd be coming southwest. We are traveling southwest. On a map, it's always north at the top unless it tells you otherwise. So what kind of soils and vegetation would we find in the marsh? So uh, what we're going to find here, so the soils are going to be very low in nutrients. They're going to be very waterlogged. So that's soil that we're going to be finding here. And what sort of vegetation are we going to find here? So we're going to be finding uh, vegetation that is suitable for creatures such as uh, dragonflies, etc. So this is going to be very sort of water tolerance or sort of grasses and as aspects like that. Let's move on. So let's look at the tropical rainforest. So we're going to be looking at the Amazon rainforest to start with, the biggest forest on the planet, part of the uh, of South America. So by looking at this, we're looking at our climate graph. Now, usually, of course, climate graphs have a blue bars for rainfall and a red line for temperature, but this one's just slightly different. So what we can see here by starting with the temperature is just how high it is. So we can see between 25 and 30 degrees, and that's pretty constant all year round. Remembering the tropical rainforests are found at the equator, so the sun energy is most concentrated, so it is the hottest place, so they have no seasons. You can see there's a huge amount of rainfall. There is a difference in rainfall throughout the year, but the rainfall is very, very high in these areas. They are the tropical rainforests after all. Due to the increased heat, so we have low pressure, rising air, which rises, condenses, forms clouds, precipitation, and that's what we're getting here, the tropical rainforests. Now, very importantly, is you need to know the different layers of the forest. So there is a video link here that you can click through to, but we're gonna have a look through at them as well. So most important, so at the top, we've got what's called the canopy layer. 
Now the canopy cover is that sort of just green carpet of leaves that you see if you see if it's like photographs above the rainforest. So this carpet of leaves where these all these trees intermingle with each other. What you will see sticking out from them are what I call the emergence. So some trees will reach up to 60 meters tall, ones that actually stick out above the uh, forest itself. Another thing you'll notice about these uh, trees is they're very small leaves. There's a huge amount of light here, so but a high amount of rainfall. So you don't need to have a big leaf in which to collect solar energy because there's so much of it. But also having too big a leaf would mean it would snap off. So we've got plants here that have adapted to have drip tips. So the water drips off and also allows them to collect as much solar energy as possible. So if we come down to the under canopy, so obviously just below that. So vegetation, a lot less sparse. The, the solar energy just doesn't make it down here. It's all trapped. It's all covered at the, uh, by the canopy. So it's very warm and it's very moist, but the rainfall is just dripping down off of those leaves, off of those trip tips. Very little wind, because again, it's all blocked out by those leaves and those trees above. What you will find as soon as a tree falls, these will try and fill that gap because so little sunlight makes it here. Coming down to the bottom layers, so we've got the shrub layer, the herb layer, leaf litter and soil layer. So you can see the shrub layer are these small little tiny trees and ferns that are just starting off again, trying to look for any gap, trying to find any sunlight. We've got the herb layer, so with the thin leaves. What you will notice in this area, though, is the size of the leaves for many of them are getting bigger. Only about one to uh, five percent of the solar energy makes it down to the forest floor. So they need to collect as much solar energy as possible when they can. So only one to five percent. We have the leaf litter. Now, the leaf litter doesn't sound very interesting, but it's one of the most important parts of the forest. It's the leaf litter falling and decaying that gives the energy, the nutrients for these trees to grow. And then the soil, again, another really surprising thing about the forests, the soil here, the roots grow in only the top 10 centimetres of it. So you've got these trees that are 60 metres tall, but the soil, their roots might only go down 10 centimetres, which is why you see these huge, what are called buttress roots here. So the tree deliberately pushes, starts create, creating its root before it reaches into the soil to give it such a big wide footprint to make it as stable as possible without having to put roots down into the soil. Now this is a, a system that you'll need to get used to seeing so we looked at these uh, previously so what we've got here are that is the nutrient cycle of the tropical rainforest. So what we can see is, if just a reminder, is the circles are stores of nutrients, the arrows are movements of nutrients. So what we can see here from the tropical rainforest is here we've got the biomass. Most nutrients are stored in the trees, in the living things, as you would expect from the size of the rainforest. So biomass nutrients are mostly held there. The leaves fall. So that's our transfer of nutrients. Those leaves have got nutrients in them and they fall to, fall to the ground to, fall, to make the litter store. Now the litter store, even though there are all these trees losing their leaves all the time, the litter store is very small because the rainforest is very hot and it is very damp. And so it's perfect conditions for decomposition. These leaves rot almost immediately. So they don't really get stored on the forest floor much because they're rotting almost straight away. Now, some of those nutrients will get washed away because of the rain, but most of them will make their way down into the soil. So again, the soil we can see is a reasonable store of nutrients because of all those nutrients that are being happening because of decomposition. Some of those nutrients, again, are getting washed out of the soil because of the rainfall. Some nutrients being added from weathering. But of course, the biggest thing we've got here are these trees, that massive forest taking all of those nutrients, hoovering up all of those nutrients to allow those trees to grow. So here we have got our nutrient cycle for the tropical rainforests. 
Um, as we said about the trees, their roots say very, very shallow. There's no point having roots going further down because there's nothing there to get. There's no nutrients down there. So here we've just got that example of where we've got those very shallow roots, just getting the, the nutrients from that leaf litter. And again, these buttress roots that we talked about. Okay, now an important skill is being able to reduce text down and to sort of take key information and break it down. So you will have in your booklets a page of text and information about this. So I want you to read through that information and start to reduce it down and create your own cycle of nutrients. So you've got to try and put in from that text, you just need a few couple of uh, lines on e in each circle to show how the nutrients move. Now, animal adaptations, one of the best parts of the tropical rainforest. So if we're looking at animal adaptations, we can see that uh, they do some quite incredible things. So a really important part of this course. So, for example, in the tropical rainforest, in the Madagascan rainforest, 80% of the trees, uh, the animals live in the canopy layer because that's where the flowers are, that where, that's where the fruits are, and that's where the animals go between them. There's no point going lower down in the forest because there's nothing there. So the Madagascan lemurs have adapted themselves. They have changed themselves to live in these conditions. So their hands and their feet will grip and their towels allow them balance and allow them to swing and to go between and leap between the trees. No point going all the way down to the bottom and climbing another one. That's very inefficient. So these animals have adapted to live in the canopy where the food is. The Philippine serpent eagle. So again, most of the animals live up in that canopy. So this animal has adapted to be fast maneuvering, has powerful legs, that means it can grab things like the lemurs, the frogs, the birds and snakes, and it has incredibly good eyesight. So very maneuverable, can go swoop down into the canopy and get its prey. And the poison arrow frog, one of my favorites. Now, obviously the thing that really stands out with this is that yellow color. Yellow is a sign of being poisonous. Yellow is a sign of don't eat me because you're going to die. So the yellow poison arrow frog is basically shouting at people saying, I am dangerous. Don't eat me. And it say, is very incredibly poisonous. And what, of course, some other animals have been very clever about doing it is adapting. You will have in the rainforest some animals that will adapt to be yellow to show that they're poisonous, even though they're not. So they have, they're tricking other creatures into that, look, I'm poisonous, don't eat me. So the poison arrow frog, tiny little thing, incredibly dangerous. So to finish up, what I need you to do, you've got this mind map that's been started in your booklet. So you can see, we can start to summarize some of these things. So you can see, you're gonna be summarizing different things about the lemurs, the forests, um, the layers. And so this is giving you that summary sheet of the tropical rainforest.